Hi, nobodies. I've been working really hard not to look over there when I start. <laughs> I don't know why I do. It's like there's not some invisible. I mean, maybe there is something there. I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure about ghosts and spirits and gin and and stuff. Um, Cause I've never seen one. <laughs> you know, I take more of a logical approach to things. In case you haven't noticed, I I say, well, we've got. You know, <laughs> I have not seen proof. I will not say that those things don't exist. I will say that I've never seen one, so I don't believe in them. So anyway, um, today I was talking to a friend who had told me that they were diagnosed as bipolar. And they had told me what they had taken and, and, um, and how they'd been on it for years and they quit cold turkey and, and they were fine now. Now, let me tell you something. My, <laughs> I, I, okay, I can pick up on an unmedicated bipolar person in a snap. I hate them. <laughs> I mean, I will, I will literally sit there and go, I don't like you. You know, I mean, I, I literally do not want to be around them. Now, if they're medicated, I won't know. Um, but if they're unmedicated, I can't stand it. Um, so, you know, I was talking to him and I was like, okay, they put you on an antidepressant. Well, antidepressants help with bipolar, but normally they, they, they still have to put you on a mood stabilizer, which is typically an antipsychotic. Um, I mean, there's some that are not antipsychotics that they use like uh, Topamax, Lithium, and I can't think of any others because most of the time they use, oh, gabapentin, most of the time they use antipsychotics. Because with, with depression, your serotonin level is really low and your body is not making as much as it needs to maintain a, a level personality. So your personality is low, you're sleepy, you're weepy. Um, all of that stuff. A person who's bipolar, even with that medication keeping them at a level, that's not going to stop that level from shooting way up for, you know, days, weeks, months, maybe two months. The whole time, you're like hardly sleeping. It's go, 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 go. Do, 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 do. You know, you're just like, like obsessed you're almost like a crystal meth addict you know like um when i get episodes of mania because you do get mania some people get mania with bpd so when i get mania like i, I can remember being younger and i would be up at three o'clock in the morning with a toothbrush like detail cleaning the cabinets of grease that had been there like 10 years because my parent my mom never cleaned the cabinets and that's the kind of thing i would do and that that is the type of thing you do when you're on that, that high manic and you're, that's the time when you're more likely to be, uh, impulsive and, and do things that you really shouldn't do drugs and sex. And I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't have sex, but you know, like really like going out, you know, like a person on that high might be out clubbing and going home with a different guy every day you know, just hooking up here and there, you know, flirting with everybody and just, just, doo -doo -doo -doo, just out of sight. And then that same person, so much time later, will lay in bed for days and just be fucking sad, suicidal, you know, just, just bad off. What, what you would think of as depressed um, with borderline personality disorder. Now, now see, with bipolar, the main thing is that there's normally a pattern to the bipolar. You know, you'll have, uh, I don't know, I, I've heard some people describe it like they can feel it coming, the high is coming or the low is coming, like they can feel it coming up. 
maybe like an like the aura that epileptics get you know that they know it's coming but uh it's typically you know like they're they'll have like a pattern normally to this but it's it's normally long time high long time low um and I guess maybe a, a long time of in-between. I didn't see anything on the in-between <laughs> when maybe you're just normal. Um, with BPD, though, everything is trigger-based. Everything. This person said my trigger word to me. Or they said a phrase. Or they looked at me a certain way. Or, or they said they disrespected me, you know. Or they hurt me. And I think different people with BPD react different ways. Because he uh, angry stuff just kind of rolls down my back. Like if somebody insults me, I don't know how to deal with it. So I don't get like really mad. I don't have to push down like, how dare you? I don't have to do that. Because that part of my brain is not really set up to function and and so I think it's the same way with other people with BPD is that you know some of them are going to be like real quick for that low and the thing is is that like you can be with BPD you can be so low and all you really need to do and I think it's the same way with all of the personalities because I've noticed it with my daughter who has who I think has um, antisocial personality disorder, um, she'll go to sleep. And it's like she's been reset. You know, but our moods, you're looking at maybe an hour. And just as that low mood can be triggered, a high mood can be triggered. Um, and, and I mean, this can happen within 30 minutes. Like you can be just like bottom of the barrel. I just want to die. And then 30 minutes later, everything's fine. <laughs> everything's fabulous. Um, with bipolar, you're not going to bring them down or pull them up because it's a chemical thing. It is completely chemical. Um, and that's, and with BPD, it is not chemical. It is all trigger based. Um, I don't think stress really affects a bipolar person as far as their bipolar gets worse or better. I mean, yeah, it's obviously going to affect them. Stress affects everybody, but I don't think it affects, like if they're in their high, they're going to stay there. Because that's their pattern. If they're in their low. You're going to be giving them an extra bad day. If you give them bad news. But a person who's bipolar. You know. I mean it's just. It's it's like uh, flipping a switch. And then. It's done. You know. Um, and I was telling my friend. I was like. Hey I don't. I don't think you're bipolar. And. I, I hesitate to tell people, I think you might have BPD because I don't want to be that person who says, well, you know, I've got this and it sounds like you got it too. <laughs> I don't like to do that. Um, but just listening to him and knowing that he's been going so many years without medication and he hasn't gotten into any trouble because he's reworked his thinking he's basically done self-therapy without being told how to do it and and he's gotten better um this is a person that's very very positive about things and positive thinking for a bpd person can can change so much because you really have to stop yourself when you get mad and say am i overreacting or, like, if you're devastated, like I get, I'm definitely overreacting. <laughs> they just they just said something I didn't like, and now I'm blowing it all out of proportion in my head. You know, because one bad thought dominoes into another. 
And that's not to say somebody who's bipolar doesn't do the same thing. They do. But the problem is, is how they handle it. And it really depends on whether they're in their high or their low when they're triggered by something. Because they, they get triggered about stuff. I mean, I consider a trigger anything that causes a strong reaction. So when somebody who's on their high part of bipolar, if somebody steps to them and they just lose their shit and explode on them, they're still in their high. You have not brought them down to their low. And whatever happens after that isn't going to do it because it's going to happen when it's supposed to happen based on how the chemicals decide to, to mix up on them. With, with borderline, you have to know your triggers and you have to know how to stop them. And so I was telling him, I'm like, I hesitate to say it because I don't want to, to put that on you that I'm saying well I think you got this because I'm not a professional I just do a lot of research I read a lot I know people I'm in I'm in groups and I and I see what everybody's struggling with and then I see what people say in response to what a poster is posting you know and it gives you a really broad base of of their thought process now I'm not entirely sure how it works out when somebody's got both. Um, I really don't. Because I, I, I don't know how... Mom, you know where the cat treats are? No, I don't. Now go. I love you. Love you too. See, I, told, I said yesterday. I send him out and I always say I love you so he knows that I don't hate him. Um... Yeah, I, I'm not sure how it works when somebody's got both. Because you can have both. But I do know that if you've got one, you know, this is what it looks like. And that particular friend, his, his childhood was not good. And I can honestly say what he went through is the kind of thing that makes me invalidate what I went through. And have I talked about that? That don't think just because, oh, my mom didn't show me love. Or my dad never accepted me. You know, like, I think my dad, you know, he, he, I wanted to be like my brother because I thought my dad would love me, but he wanted me, he, he just never really, you know, I never really felt like he loved me. Withholding love is abuse. A parent that doesn't praise you or anything, um, if you're living with a narcissist, somebody who is always, you've embarrassed me, you know, and you get punished because you embarrassed them. You made them look bad. You know, when you're in a situation like that, that is abuse if it's happening all the time. Bullying is abuse and a lot of times, those of us who were not um, sexually assaulted or beat up with fists and, and belts and, and things like that, a lot of us will think, well, I didn't have it that bad. It wasn't that bad. It was, you know, it, I'm, you know, because you, you feel like. It is like I always said, you know, the best job for uh, somebody who's paralyzed. I used to say this. I don't say it anymore. But somebody who's paralyzed from the neck down would make a great therapist. Because how can you bitch about your shit when he's sitting there and can't move his, you know. And, and now I realize like the flaw in that thinking because see the thing is, is you need to bitch. Because somebody else's life pain and all of that it affects you and your pain just as much as somebody else's wealth affects your wealth it doesn't their wealth is theirs your what you have is what you have them being poorer than you might make you you feel like more fortunate but when they're richer than you you're like well what do you know about the struggle <laughs> you know um
Uh-oh. Gavin's gotten into something. I think he's trying to bring me coffee. <laughs> I don't want coffee. No. But, uh, you know, we, we don't need to... A, a lot of people with mental illness have spent their whole life being not being validated for how they feel. You know, people saying, oh, you're being a drama queen. Or, buck up. Walk it off. You know, um, life's not fair. Which I say life's not fair because life isn't fair. That's a decent statement. You know, most of the time I use life's not fair when one of my kids is pissed. I'll say, well, life's not fair. Because <laughs> I'll say, this ain't fair. Well, life's not fair. You know, you're going to have to learn to deal with that. I'm not really negating that. I'm not really invalidating her, but it is an invalidating statement. So most of us with mental illness, and, and I'm sure a fair amount of people without it, are used to people telling them it could be worse. You know, and those are just really not helpful statements. Those are basically saying like, what are you bitching for? Why are you crying? You've got no reason to cry. Look at this. You know, and your pain is valid. I don't care if everybody thinks you are a drama queen and chaos follows you wherever you go. Your pain is valid. Every teardrop you cry is valid. Does it mean I want to see it? No. I will send my kids to their room after I find out what's wrong. <laughs> I'll say, okay, well, go cry in your room. Go do that. So don't, so you can't invalidate what happened to you because somebody had it worse. That's their pain, their story, their thing to deal with. And chances are in other aspects of their life, they had it better than you did. Like maybe their mom was a good mom. Maybe their mom didn't throw cats into a backyard of dogs that like to kill cats. You know, maybe their mom was a good role model. You know? And and that's the thing, you know, you, you cannot compare your struggle with somebody else's. You can sympathize with them. You can tell them how you got through if you've made it through. But you can't take it away. Because that's their that's theirs to bear. Just as yours is yours to bear. And you can't you can't invalidate yourself just because somebody had it worse. Because there's always gonna be somebody worse. Always. And then there's always gonna be somebody who who hears your story and says, Oh my goodness, I I was so lucky, you know, and that's the thing, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not their pain to bear, it's yours, and it's valid. So anyway, if you've got bipolar, and you feel like things just aren't working, don't always take that first psychiatrist, I mean, because I was originally diagnosed as bipolar, but even though I was BPD since I was 16, I knew 10 years before I got the diagnosis. You know, you don't always have to take it because they do look similar. They look very similar, but, you know, you have to really, like, look up signs and symptoms and differences and verses and, and all that. But like I said, if you got both, holy crap, I ain't suffering at all. <laughs> I'm going to invalidate my BPD and bow down to somebody who's living with bipolar and BPD. But anyway, I am going to get off of here and do stuff. Nothing bad, I swear. Scout's honor. Or brownie's honor. I don't even know that. I don't even think we had like a hand thing. Anyway, have a good night. Try to think positive thoughts try to turn every negative around try to think of something you know if you think of something you know you see a mole on your leg and you say i hate that mole but i like this dimple <laughs> or that's a slim ankle i got there or i've got a pinky toenail
because some of us don't. Some of us lose that quite often. I very rarely have a pinky toenail, so you can always say, well, I've got a pinky toenail, and I can paint it, and it'll look pretty. Anyway, have a good night.